What is up everybody, it's the Minifigure Guru, and I'm here with a ranking video. This one's obviously a little bit different, considering that it's a ranking. Um, it's still Marvel though, we're, we're not changing that up just yet. We're gonna stick with Marvel for a couple more videos. Um, but this is gonna be ranking all of the years. Um, I base this off of the highlights, uh, what are the low spots of the year, is the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive figure or figures for a couple of years. Um, good or great or eh, like what, like where, where do those land? All that into consideration, I got a score and then using that, I ranked it. So with that being said, let's get into it with my least favorite year, which is gonna be 2012. 2012 had some pretty good sets. Um, the Avengers line was pretty good all around. It had Captain America Avenging Cycle, which I thought was great. I thought Quinjet Aerial Battle was great. Um, I also thought that the Wolverine Chopper Showdown was great. You get Deadpool, Magneto, Wolverine, a really good cast of characters. I also thought Spider-Man Doc Ock Ambush was really good, with Spider-Man finally returning after being gone since like 2004, I want to say. Uh, you get Iron Fist, which we still haven't gotten another rendition of since. An awesome Doc Ock variant and a pretty good little build. Though it also had those three buildable figures, being Iron Man, the Hulk, and Captain America. Those weren't too good. Um, and they bring it down a lot. Um, overall, I mean, th this wasn't a very uh, packed year. And either the sets were hit or miss. And those buildable figures really bring it down in, in score. Though what I'll give it um, a huge props to is the San Diego Comic-Con. We got, they're not great printing, I'll give it that, but they're cool. You get Spider-Man in his black symbiote costume, which I think the reason we haven't gotten it since is because you can't really do anything different with it. So it's like, we're stuck with it because if they make like a new one, it's going to look the same and then devalue this one and they don't want to do that. So that's why I don't think we've gotten... Um, a black suit Spider-Man, even though we have a million Venom and Spider-Man sets, it's like, why haven't we gotten that? It's that that's why. Phoenix, awesome. Um, I think that they were planning on releasing many more X-Men sets at the time, but they probably didn't sell as well uh, as the movies weren't as good or popular. Uh, we also have the, those really cool Iron Man and Captain America ones. They don't look that good, but first off, they're worth a lot, and it's just a cool little thing, because a lot of people don't even know those are things for, you know, I didn't know for a long time that those were things. And they predate, you know, everything else by, uh, by a couple months. And that's why uh, 2012 is at the bottom. Next up, we have 2014. It's highlights. Two of the Guardians of the Galaxy sets are amazing. Those being Nowhere Escape Mission and Milano Spaceship Rescue. Buying those two sets alone, you'd have the whole cast, pretty much. Just about every important character, at least. You'd have the Guardians of the Galaxy, Nebula, and Ronin. You know, you have all those guys. And also, they're great looking builds. Love the Milano spaceship and love the little prison build. Also, you got the X-Men versus Centennial, or Sentinel, I think that's it, Sentinel. Sentinel, that's pretty cool. Though you also have sets like Doc Ock Truck Heist where everything's bad except for the one Doc Ock minifigure, which is my favorite Doc Ock minifigure, but doesn't uh, excuse everything else. You also have um, Spider-Man Polybag with a overdone Spider-Man and a horrible build to go along with it. spider Trike versus Electro is pretty bad. Um, you get a cool Electro, but that's it. The Electro Polybag itself with the Amazing Spider-Man 2 looking Electro, that's pretty cool. The Rocket Raccoon is also pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, you know, all around, there's a good amount of bad things, good amount of good things. That's why it's this low. I will also say though, the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive sucks this year. It's my least favorite year. The collector, I just don't think is that cool. Um, he, one, uses an outdated hairpiece. Uh, I will hate that hairpiece till the day I die. The cape is unique. The printing isn't anything too spectacular. And the collector as a character isn't someone you're really thinking of when you're thinking exclusive. You know, only a thousand people or so are ever going to be able to hold this minifigure. It's like and you chose the collector like you know like really um you could uh this is that this is like the 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 uh comic-con is like the excuse to experiment to do like deadpool duck stuff like that i think that's that's what this is for and not just 
the collector. That's why I don't really like DCs because they usually use it as almost a marketing tool as they'll put like the Adam from the show uh, from the shows in there or Vixen who's in the new cartoon. It's like I don't care about those characters. Give us someone cool like when they gave us Bizarro. I'm getting off track but that's what I feel a Comic-Con exclusive should be. Next up we have 2013. Originally actually this was higher than 2017 um, which spoilers probably is the next one. But in the end, I'm like, it only has nine sets um, and only like three or four actual sets. A lot of poly bags. Um, it's just, it's just not that good. But the nine, the, the fact that it only has nine sets really helped it in terms of its score. And that's why it ended up higher. Then I realized, okay, no, I shouldn't do that. So I dropped it down. Now it ended up here. So some of the highlights are the Iron Patriot. Awesome. The Daily Bugle, awesome. All the Iron Man 3 sets are really good, but the highlight is the Malibu Mansion attack. Um, also, the um, San Diego Comic Con, uh, this is probably tied as the best year for me, as I love the amazing Spider Man looking Spider Man. Um, I literally wish I had it so bad. It's probably my favorite Spider Man they ever made. Closely, and it, if it's not, it's closely behind um, Spider Man, like from the original trilogy he also gets spider Mo spider woman in this year two just incredible exclusive awesome sets you also but then you also get iron man versus fighting drone which includes a lackluster build with a iron man that we've gotten before and probably should have stayed exclusive to the set it was in um also uh you know not a huge fan of the spider man cycle chase as uh, Nick Fury and Venom are both outdated, so is the Spider-Man, and he's overdone. He's outdated and overdone. Not a huge fan of the car or, uh, like, bike design. Overall, you know, it's about a half and half year, and it's half and half with only nine sets, so it is very disappointing. I realize that now, um, but again, the exclusives this year are just mind-blowing. Next up, we have 2017. Some of the highlights are Mighty Micros, Iron Man vs. Thanos, Captain America Jet Pursuit, Iron Man Detroit Steel Strikes, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 line, um, but we are the Beware of the Vulture, Ultimate Battle for Asgard. All really good. Um, the exclusive this year being Deadpool Duck. I did mention it as an, uh, as an example of a really good minifigure, but I'm not actually a huge fan of it. I just... I don't know. I'm not a huge fan, though. I appreciate that it is experimenting and it's something fun and unique that they probably wouldn't put in a set otherwise. So I like it for that. But but then we have sets like Mighty Micro Spider-Man versus Scorpion. Um, the Milano Poly Bag isn't that good. The ATM Heist Battle, Hulk versus Red Hulk, all pretty crappy sets. So it ends up about in the middle. And actually, it has my least favorite set, I think, of all time, which is the ATM heist battle from Spider-Man Homecoming, because it's such a waste of potential. Instead of getting, you know, Ned Leeds or MJ or Flash Thompson, you know, none of these people who we hadn't gotten at the time, and maybe the homemade Spider-Man costume, we got the same Spider-Man costume that we've now seen like five times, um, with two lame uh, extra mini figures who don't stand out at all other than they have ooh some cool face prints whatever a uh, very crappy and not cool looking bank with a stupid looking motorcycle I just don't like this set at all one bad set on its own two wasted potential not a huge fan that's why it's about here mid tier next up one that may surprise you 2020. 2020 has some great things like Captain Marvel and Nick Fury, two really cool minifigures. Falcon and Black Widow team up, same thing, two really cool minifigures. Um, you have Avengers Speeder Bike Attack, two really cool minifigures. Venom Source Ambush, great build, four really cool minifigures. Avengers Helicarrier, awesome rendition on the Helicarrier. Black Widow's Helicopter Chase, three cool minifigures. Venom Crawler is pretty good. Avengers Tower, Iron Man Army. I'm listing all these names and you're probably wondering, so why is it like kind of low? Well, there's so many bad ones. They really fluked on about half of them and that's why it's here. You have the Iron Man mech, the Thanos mech, and Spider-Man mech. First off, the Iron Man is an exclusive, neither is the Spider-Man. Thanos is, but why would anyone want this type of Thanos? 
I'm probably going to get it because I'm trying to collect every single Marvel minifigure, but that's my burden to bear. Just like, you know, m &R Productions, he collects every Star Wars set, even when it's crappy, he needs it because he collects. So it's like, that's the burden we kind of take on doing this gig, and I'm going to want and need this minifigure, but not, if I wasn't trying to collect all of them, I wouldn't want at all that minifigure. Avengers truck takedown is also pretty bad. You, it does come with two awesome minifigures, those being Hawkeye and Captain America, but the build is so bad in my opinion, I don't know. I just can't get over it. I think it looks so dumb. Um, Vulture truck robbery is okay. It comes with like a okay rendition of Vulture, but every other vault, I think this is the worst Vulture that we've gotten, um, and no one else is unique. You can say that about all the Spider-Man sets this year, to be quite honest. They're all like small, crappy builds with one good minifigure. Spider-Man versus Doc Ock, one good minifigure being Spider-Woman black and white. Menace to Mysterio, one good, I don't know, Spider-Gwen's kind of good, but we've seen her before, so we're going to pretend she's not there. Mysterio, good, but everything else, whatever. Spider-Man, Spider-Jet versus Venom mech, we've seen Venom, we've seen Spider-Man. Those builds aren't good, but you get Spider Noir. So th this keeps coming up um, over and over again, and it just really makes it kind of a crappy year. Also, we're not going to get a Comic Con exclusive year this year, which is no fault to Lego. I understand that, but that doesn't change that it is disappointing. Overall, looking back or looking at it, I'm very surprised that it says low, and there's a possibility that they release two or three sets that blow my mind away, and it overtakes our next spot i just don't see that happening that's why it's here next up we have 2019 some of the highlights here we got iron man and dummy we get that the quantum realm iron man suit we have avengers tower awesome little model spider-man in the museum breakout we get nut beads a kind of cool version of spider-man a really cool version of maria hill we also have spider-man spider crawler awesome minifigures spider mech versus venom awesome minifigures great build um we have iron man hall of armor Pretty good, uh, incredible set. We have Captain Marvel and Skrull Attack, Molten Man, Hydro Man Attack, uh, Avengers Hulk Helicopter Rescue is pretty good. You got the Captain Marvel and the Assists, um, which is the exclusive uh, event exclusive Captain Marvel set with Maria Rambeau and the and Goose like you know freaking out or whatever. And also you get the Captain Marvel. This is the first time she appeared. So it's pretty good, but it also has sets like Spider-Man, Doc Ock, Diamond Heist with a horrible Doc Ock, lame Doc Worker, lame build, lame Spider-Man, or overdone Spider-Man, I should say. Spider-Man, Car Chase, an okay variant of Green Goblin, even though he's still, the Magento one is still better. Um, Stark Jet, Drone Attack, pretty crappy set. The Endgame line as a whole is a disappointment, but I can't really say they're bad sets on their own. But then you also have Spider-Man Mini Spider Crawler. You know, again, this is we're we're up here. We mean we're up here now. We're we're at good years, of course. I think I think every year is good. Okay, I mean let's be honest. You get good Lego sets, it's a good year. Um, but about 2017 is when you get to a point where it's like, okay, this is actually a good year, not just a mediocre year. And so I say these things, and it sounds like I hate every year. It's it's gonna sound like that, and I understand that, but I don't. I just have to prove my point of why it's where it is, and by doing that, I have to pretty much end up talking more negative than positive. Hopefully, you understand. But you also get PS4 Spider-Man. Really want it so incredibly badly. I want this Comic Con exclusive, um, maybe one day. But overall, really good year. Um, I think the endgame line, looking back, was definitely a disappointment, don't get me wrong, but pretty good, pretty good. So, uh, yeah, 2019. Now we're in the top three uh, at our third spot, ranked, we have 2015. 2015 gave us stuff like the Ultron line, Age of Ultron line was awesome, you get Iron Man vs. Ultron, uh, the Hulkbuster Smash, the Avengers Quinjet City Chase. Rhino and Sandman Super Villain Team Up, Attack on Avengers Tower, Ant Man Final Battle, The Shield Hel Helicarrier, The Winter Soldier, uh, The Throne of Ultron. All awesome stuff. Uh, the things that knock it back are Spider Man Super Jumper Polybag, again, lame Spider Man uh, with a lamer build. Um, the Hydra Fortress Smash, pretty underwhelming set. It only has one 
It does have three exclusive minifigures, but only one important one, that being Quicksilver. Um, overall, yeah, there's not much bad to say about this year. It's a very solid, solid year. Um, probably 85% solid. Um, yeah. Uh, you also have an awesome all-new Captain America, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. Um, disappointing we didn't get the wings, but it's not hard to find red wings, so who cares? It's still really cool that we got him. But the dual molded legs, the awesome printing, it's just really cool. Hopefully we'll see something like this um, with Falcon and Winter Soldier. Hopefully they'll make tie-in sets, but I actually am, I don't know if they're going to. Again, hopefully they usually make tie-in sets now for Marvel movies. Um, and I can't remember the last time they didn't, but again, just please, like, oh, do please, because it's a TV show. Um, but they are making the for Mandalorian. I'm getting off track. Um, 2015, super solid year. Next up, in second place, we have 2018. 2018 gave us some very solid micro fighters. You also got both of the Black Panther sets with Rhino Face Off by the Mine and Royal Talon Fighter Attack. The entire Infinity War line, other than Corvus Glaive Thresher Tech, that being Outrider drop, Dropship Attack, Thor's Weapon Quest, Hulkbuster Smash Up, Thanos Ultimate Battle, Sanctum Sanctorum Showdown, a bunch of those sets made it onto my top 20 Marvel, along with the Hulkbuster Ultron Edition, the UCS Hulkbuster. The Quantum Realm Looks 4 is awesome. Um, the Bricktober pack was incredible. The Sheriff Deadpool Comic Con exclusive was pretty good. Um, though, again, its low lights were probably the Ammon and the Wasp um, CDC exclusive set, nothing exclusive. Um, I think I said that the micro fighters were good, but I actually take that back. I'm not a huge fan of these micro fighters. Um, not to say they're bad at all, because this is again the second rank set, but I'm just justifying why it's below t our next one, which now that I've proven my, or given my case for 2018, let's move on to our best year in my opinion. That being 2016, I think it only missed on one set this year, um, but the big thing is how many sets, looking back, were on the top 10 of my LEGO Marvel sets. Let's go into it with the Captain America motorcycle. Great little build. Um, Spider-Man vs. Venom symbiote. I love it because it reminds me of Spider-Man 3 when Venom becomes big for like two seconds, uh, so I actually really like that poly bag. Black Panther Pursuit, I think comes with three great minifigures, an okay build. The Iron Skull Sub-Attack, four great minifigures, cool little build, I remember loving that as a kid. Avenged Jet Space Mission, again in my top 10 I think, uh, definitely my top 20, I love this set. Five incredible minifigures and a very solid build. Crossbone Hazard Heist, three great minifigures, solid build. Superhero Airport Battle, my third favorite set of all time. Eight great minifigures, great builds. Um, Spider-Man Web Warriors Ultimate Bridge Battle, my favorite set of all time came out this year. Um, seven great minifigures, great, great, incredible build. Spider-Man Ghost Rider Team Up, great. Doc Ock Tentacle Trap, great. Sanctum Sanctorum, great. The Mighty Micro, great. Tanker Truck Tank Down, great. Silver Centurion, my favorite minifigure of all time, great. An incredible CDC with Steve Rogers, Captain America. Literally, the my favorite minifigure and set of all time are here, along with many that made it in my top 20 and 30 minifigures and sets. Just what an incredible year uh, for Lego. And yeah, that's the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I know it was a bit of a longer one again, but it takes a while to explain my case. Um, I'm so excited for the future of Marvel and to see where future year stack and I like the way they're headed to be honest more sets are coming out uh, in these recent years so that's awesome anyway hope you guys enjoyed I'll see you guys next time bye